Let's look at the most, or one of the most intelligent machine, uh, the human, us. And if you look at one of the important factor of development of human is communication. Really early on, we communicate our happiness, our surprise, or even our sadness. We do it through our gesture, and this is a core aspect, a really important aspect, of a child and her mother. Communication becomes important from the beginning, and over all of our life, we develop these communication skills to the point of today, being able to have this wonderful event like the World Economic Forum, where we communicate ideas, emotions, and this is done through three main modalities. The first one, and this is the rule of three, uh, V. The first one is the verbal. When we communicate, are deciding on specific words, and they're really important. Their meaning is important. But every word can have a really subtle change to it. Even a word like okay, if I say okay, 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 there I change, and the subtlety of human communication is so powerful and makes our communication so efficient that makes these meetings possible. And so when, when we want to think about an intelligent machine, we have to go in the verbal, in the vocal, and you're probably expecting the next V, the visual. So a lot of what we do is to my gestures, to my facial expression, to the proxemics, to my posture. All of these three Vs are essential to human communication. So how are we communicating with computers, with keyboard and mouse? We are also, these days, having much, uh, we have newer technology like touchscreen and VR. And we're getting closer, but it's much further than what is human communication. So when we think about these intelligent machine, Human communication, being able to understand and communicate with human in a natural way becomes important. And this is true for embodied intelligent machine, like a robot, a virtual human. But it is also true for non-embodied intelligent machine. Your cell phone, your computers, that may not have a face, that may not have a direct embodiment, but this is also really important. So for all of these cases, one of the core components is what's called multimodal AI. Multimodal AI is this capability of computers, intelligent machine, to understand the subtlety of human communication. And what's exciting now is that we, and I would say we, the community, scientific community in general, the community, have found really interesting new technology to address this challenge. One of the big ones is we were able to go from a really shallow interpretation of human communication to a much deeper understanding, going from understanding only the facial landmark, motion of the eyebrows, or simply the motion of, of a mouth, to a level where we also understand the uh, appearance of a face and the subtlety in the appearance to the point where we can, in fact, study all 48 muscles of the face, and from this, being able to infer the perceived expression or emotion. And I say perceive in this case because what really someone feels is also still a challenge, but we're getting closer to a deeper interpretation. A second aspect is that computer, with all this power we have in these computers, we can go from a micro to a multi-level interpretation of human communication, where we understand at the first level something simple as a gaze. That's a first level of looking at the dynamic of human communication. But as I said, communication is a lot more than that. We should look at the multimodal, how a person is behaving, and how all these, what the three V, the verbal, the visual, the vocal. But I'm not just talking to myself. I'm talking to you. And so a lot of it is also when computers now these days are looking at communication as an interpersonal dynamic. Two people talking together, a patient 
a patient with their doctors. So that's what one of the key aspects. And this is going now these days to the next level of group and social dynamic and looking at different cultural norms. So this is a, a really important aspect of this new technology is that we're looking at it at multiple level. And the last one, the last piece, the ingredient, was that we are able to have a lot more information freely available. And so we can go from small data to big data where a lot of examples of people communicating and not just laboratory, but in really different scenarios, different culture, and different individual. The last piece is that the algorithms are getting a lot smarter, and we can handle a lot more of this data. So multimodal AI is one of the key components, I believe, of intelligent machine. And that's also what allows us to think of what do we want these intelligent machine to be or to do? Right now, there are a lot of command-like. I command my Siri or I command my cell phone to do something. But I believe that computers are a lot more about colleagues and coworkers. So I believe, and that's in fact, we already see some example of that, that these technology will help, for example, a doctor to be able to help during diagnosis or assessment of mental health disorder and be able to look at the subtlety of communication and be able to give this feedback to the doctor. There's a big change in how education is happening. In fact, people are learning remotely. But we know that remote interaction is really challenging when you compare to face-to-face -face interaction. And technology can help us for that. And this is true for business interaction also. We are lucky today to be all together, but what if we have to interact remotely? So let me give you an example of a first step toward this intelligent machine, and let me introduce Ellie. In fact, Ellie is part of the SimSense project, and Ellie is there to help doctors during their assessments of mental health. She is not a doctor, she is not a virtual doctor, she is an assistant, she's an interviewer, she's gathering information. And when we're looking at depression or distress in general, this is a challenging thing for any uh, clinician to uh, successfully diagnose. And so what if we could do what exists in other parts of medicine? Example, a doctor has the intuition about a disease, they will do a blood sample, a blood test and then look at the details. For mental health, we have now the possibility of doing an interaction sample. How did that person change over time? So maybe we can reduce the treatment and change the medication. So let me introduce Ellie with an interaction and showing how she can interact in real time and perceive the verbal, the visual, and the vocal. I'm Ellie. Thanks for coming in today. I was created to talk to people in a safe and secure environment. I'm not a therapist, but I'm here to learn about people and would love to learn about you. I'll ask a few questions to get us started. And please feel free to tell me anything. Your answers are totally confidential. Are you okay with this? Yes. So, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. That's good. Where are you from originally? I'm from Los Angeles. Oh, I'm from LA myself. When was the last time you felt really happy? Um, but I try to stay happy. Um, I, I'd rather be happy. Uh, my kids keep me going. What advice would you have given yourself 10 or 20 years ago? Um, to, uh, to not believe, uh, to, to, to not be so gullible, to not be so gullible. So this is a short example. In fact, we had more than 150 people interacting with SimSense, and this is just over a period of a few weeks. And what was interesting is the interaction was supposed to be only 15 minutes. People enjoyed talking with her. She talked for 30 or 40 minutes. 
In fact, if you look at how much sadness or real behavior they show, there's more sadness when they're interacting with a fully automatic intelligent machine than when they think that there's a human behind pressing the button. And what is really interesting is because of all this data, we can start looking at differences. For example, differences between men and women for depression or for anxiety. So these tools are one example. And as you can imagine, there's a lot more of these uh, examples going on uh, for both uh, healthcare, for education and business, where intelligent machine can help as a coworker uh, and as a colleague. Thank you very much for your attention.